Let's talk to Ricardo Evangelista. He is from Active Trades. Very good morning to you, Ricardo. Good morning. I hesitate to them because I think I pronounced your surname correctly for a change. <laughs> boom, boom. Right, let's um, get some serious stuff underway. Let's talk about Italy. What on earth is going on there? Um, yes, uh, some turbulence um, in the markets uh, globally felt. Um, all of this because of what's going on in Italy. Um, so um, we had an election back in March and there was no clear winner from that election but the two parties that emerged as the strongest uh, were two populist or so-called populist parties, um, the Five Star Movement um, who, which is uh, an anti-establishment party and uh, the Liga, the former Liga Nord um, and the Liga is, uh, can be cl could be classified by some as a, as a far-right party. Uh, so both of these uh, are strongly anti-European and anti-Europe. And uh, throughout uh, all the negotiations uh, that preceded the current uh, situation, uh, they were able to somehow come together, even though on paper um, they are the most unlikely partners one can imagine. But that. Um, dislike for Europe and, uh, and the Euro brought them together, and also other points like anti-immigration, etc. Uh, well, the result of this is that they finally um, got to an agreement, decided to form government, yeah. and uh, President Mattarella uh, then um, stopped the train on its tracks by uh, saying that he would not accept a, a finance minister who has a strong anti-Euro and anti-European agenda. Someone who said in the past that if he ever got into a position of doing so, he would get rid of the Euro, or, or rather uh, take Italy out of the Euro. So with, uh, with this uh, position taken by President Mattarella, um, the whole thing came to an halt. Um, the markets got extremely spooked yep. uh, because the logical consequence is that uh, an election may have to be called. Uh, and uh, a new election would, in fact, be uh, an unofficial referendum on U Euro membership and even European Union membership. And with Italy being the strong, the third strongest economy of the Eurozone, um, it's, it's, it's a departure, departure from, from Euro um, would, in the opinion of many people, lead to the end of the Euro. So markets got extremely spooked by this. We saw the euro tumbling down. We saw, uh, I mean, everywhere, all sorts of repercussions, yen going up. Uh, we, saw, we saw the yields in American treasuries coming down because of demand. So all safe haven uh, assets um, registered strong demand and everything else was risk off. Today, we're seeing that the euro uh, seems to have recovered because um, these two movements, the Five Star and the Liga, uh, decided that they would somehow accommodate President Mattarella's uh, decision and uh, try to still form a government. Because in the meantime, he had indicted someone else to form a government uh, who is just a bureaucrat. Uh, so this is the situation at the moment. It will be interesting to follow. Uh, I don't think we're done with Italy yet. Right. And uh, some more interesting uh, points to come in the near future, I think. Okay, so in terms of euro dollar, um, we had some people come on and say that they thought this was a short yesterday, and obviously it snapped back. Uh, what are you thinking on the euro dollar short term? Um, well, we have to look at the dollar as well, not just at the euro. So we know that for the time being, um, in the spreads on uh, on Italian treasuries, for example, and other southern European treasuries as well, are recovering. Yep. Uh, in the sense of uh, from easing off pressure from having achieved highs, yearly highs uh, on Tuesday and Wednesday, Tuesday, sorry, Tuesday, and um, the euro as well is recovering, but we have to look at the other side of the equation as well, which is the, the dollar, what's going on in America. Uh, so we have uh, a situation in America, today we'll have a little bit of clarity, if, if any is needed, uh, with the publication of some figures, we have the beige book figures, which gives uh, information about the economy at large, some anecdotal um, uh, information, uh, but everybody is pretty much uh, agreed on the point that um, we will have an interest rate rise in June. Yep. 
uh, and more likely than not, only one more after that. So three, three this, not year, four this year, not four. So, uh, but that's already priced in the dollar. But it, it will be interesting to see what happens with uh, with um, with the so-called negotiations. They, they they don't really fit the um, the normal definition of negotiations because it's sort of a hot and cold attitude from the American side that is now triggering a more belligerent attitude as well from the Chinese, for example, saying that they are ready for a conflict should the Americans want it. Yep. Yesterday we had J uh, Justin Trudeau, the um, Canadian president, saying that um, no NAFTA is, uh, is better than North, Atlant uh, the North American uh, free trade. Free trade. Uh, is, no NAFTA is better than, uh, than a bad agreement. Uh, so I think the, um, the American stance is sort of triggering uh, a similar attitude on their uh, partners or potential uh, business partners. So it will be interesting to see how all of that unfolds. But definitely, definitely, um, we have to look at Europe and, uh, and the European Central Bank finds itself uh, between, uh, between the sword and the wall, as we say. Uh, because on the one hand, inflation seems to be finally recovering to a place closer to, to where everybody wants it to be. Uh, but on the other hand, we still have the instability, the political instability and, uh, and the perceived fragility of the euro, uh, very susceptible to political turbulence like we've just seen. Uh, and also we have other, other countries within the eurozone that can suffer as, a, as, a, as collateral damage uh, from all of these. So we saw that Spain as well, and they're having a political crisis of their yep. own with Prime Minister Rajoy uh, facing a, a possible, uh, you know, um, uh, being, being, yes, yes, exactly, being pushed out uh, because he's somehow involved in corruption, uh, financing, political financing corruption and, uh, and um, favoring some, uh, some people in exchange for funding for the party. Uh, so we have to look out for this. We also have Greece. I would say that in the medium to long term, uh, probably most analysts are right that the euro still has uh, some, some ground to lose. Mm. OK, let's wrap up with crude. Um, we're sort of, I think, 4% off the highs that are there thereabouts. OK, is this is the bull move finally over? Um, I would probably agree with some people that say no. Um, this is a, this is a short term um, uh, change in the, in the dynamic that preceded it because, as you know, Nick, um, stocks uh, seem to have been higher than most expected. Um, also, um, Saudi Arabia and, uh, and Russia came out and said that should there be any shortfalls in the market, um, we will uh, make up for those by increasing our output. Yep. So, so this sort of eased the, the speed at which oil prices were climbing. Uh, but I think that with Saudi Arabia having, and they are the de facto leaders of OPEC, and they really pull most of the strings there, with Saudi Arabia having a target of $80 per barrel, don't forget that they'll have the floating of Aramco. So there's a lot of interest behind this target being achieved. Uh, I would probably agree with most analysts and say that it is quite likely that we'll see further further rise in the in the prices of oil. Okay, on that note, we've run out of time, Ricardo. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you.